Good afternoon or morning, whatever you are at and whatever you're doing. I'm going to have this in many parts, this cardiovascular system, so I will start with part number one. I would like you to read in your textbook pages 286 to page 290, and that is the anatomy and physiology of the cardiovascular system. Remember, if you are an auditory learner and learn best by me speaking this to you, then you best read it out loud. Um, if somebody needs me to put up a video of me reading that section, I can do that also, but that will be a different part of the lesson and you will need to text me, please, if that is beneficial for you. So the cardiovascular system, it is a very, and looks like a very complex system, so I will try to make it as easy as possible. Now, once you've read your um, section in your textbook, I strongly suggest that you continue on with the notes and video. The cardiovascular system consists of the blood, the heart, and the blood vessels. The purpose of the cardiovascular system is it carries all the nutrients to the cells, including the oxygen. Remember, it carries away the waste, regulates our body temperatures, the vessels in the skin dilate to keep us cool, and constrict to keep us warm. It also fights infection and has clotting ability to prevent the leaks. The first thing is the blood, and blood consists of blood cells and liquid plasma. So really all it is is like a river that's going through and bringing things through that river to um, the body. So the red blood cells, they are the also called erythrocytes, the med medical term for them, and they contain the hemoglobin that carries the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. If you remember when we were looking at our household management and our anemics, you would see that they did not have enough hemoglobin to be able to carry the oxygen and carbon dioxide. So you see a side effect of the disease process anemia would be that um, they are very tired. White blood cells are the leukocytes and they are have no color whatsoever and they are the 24-hour built-in doctors really more than doctors they're more like the warriors and they fight the infection they increase quickly and rush to the infection site as i said before when we were in safety excuse me i believe those warriors basically can swim against the grain or against the way um that your um, blood flows. So that's really an amazing thing. So they are there for your, to fight infection. Your platelets or what we call thrombocytes, they clot the blood. So when you cut yourself, they rush to the stop the leak. They have to go with the flow along with red blood cells. And I just want you to know that bone marrow make so all of the erythrocytes, the leukocytes, and the thrombocytes. Might want to know those words for another um, day. Plasma really is just the river or the liquid. It's mainly mo water and it's the mode of transmission or transport, sorry, not transmission. It carries the blood cells to the cells plus food, hormones, chemicals, um, O2 carbon dioxide, and carries away any waste products. The heart is muscle that pumps blood by the cell, blood cells and it is hollow. There are three layers to the heart. There is a pericardium, which is the outer layer, the myocardium, which is a muscle layer, and the endocardium, which is the inner in layer. If you've ever looked at a heart in the butcher shop, you'll see that usually they're cut open and there'll be a shiny layer on the outside of the heart and a shiny layer on the inside of the heart. The pericardium, peri remember is around and myo is muscle and then endo is the inner layer or endocardium so you will see the shiny outer layer and the shinier inner layer are the endocardium and the pericardium and then the big thick muscle if you've ever eaten a heart or ever looked at a heart is called the myocardio and you'll see that that will come into play later on when we look at our disease processes there are four chambers of the heart, so really it is a, when you're looking at it, you will see right here that there is a upper chamber and lower chamber, and the atria are the 
upper layers. Uh, so you may have heard of the upper chambers. So you may have heard like the atrium of the building. They're talking about that upper layer of the building. And the ventricles, they pump the blood. So the atria receive it and then it goes into the ventricles and the ventricles pump the blood back out where it needs to go. The left side of the heart receives blood from the lungs, left lungs. And that's going to be important when we look at our conditions. And it is very rich in oxygen. And the right side of the heart receives blood from the body. So the rest of the body. So it is full of carbon dioxide and waste. There are valves that keep blood flowing through the upper and lower chambers. There's also valves throughout all of our body that keep blood flowing in the right direction. Blood vessels. There are different types of blood vessels in our body. There are arteries and arteries carry blood away from the heart and all of them carry oxygen except the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery goes from the heart back to the lungs. All arteries except the pulmonary arteries carry oxygenated blood. The aorta is the largest and it runs right off of the heart. So the heart's like this and out of it comes the aorta. Then just like the bronchial tree or the respiratory tract, there are arterial art arteries and then there are arterioles. So you have the aorta, which is the main one. Then you have running off of that, you have arteries like carotid artery, femoral artery, all different arteries, those are the main ones. And then you have arterioles, which are the branches that go into the, each cell. And the capillary network is that branches or that bunch of network that goes in and out of the cell. So capillaries, as I said, they go into the cell and they pass nutrients in and carry waste away from the cell. Veins is another type. We have vein, that's where the venous return happens. And the, they return blood to the heart. And as I said, all of them carry carbon dioxide with the exception of the pulmonary vein. Pulmonary vein going from the lungs to the heart carries oxygenated blood. And mo ve most veins leave the capillaries via waste and the smallest ones are called the venules, then the veins, and then the vena cava, which enter into the heart. So enter into the right side of the heart, and you will see one is called the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Superior comes from the head and the arms, the upper area, and the inferior vena cava comes from the lower area. Aging effects on cardiovascular system. You're going to see that we've looked at these already. The heart muscle becomes weaker, arteries are narrower, decreased oxygen and nutrients to the cells. We have a decreased removal of waste products, so a higher risk of drug overdose and increased illnesses. And over time, they have a um, they overestimate often the amount of energy they have and become exhausted. I think that's going to be the end of part number one, and we will continue on part number two in a few minutes. Thank you. Have a great day. And as I said, hopefully I won't put you to sleep.